Do you ever wonder how we got into using high fructose corn syrup? How did it become so popular in the United States? Who brought it in? What was wrong with sugar? It's been used for thousands of years and now we're using corn to make our foods taste sweet? I fell into a rabbit hole and got answers for you. I found the guy who made it all happen. Can you venture a guess? I'll give you one hint. He was a US president. And he was known to be a little bit tricky. And believe it or not, it was Richard Nixon. And we all know how Tricky Dick likes to work. You simply can't trust the guy. And here's the story on how the United States got into the high fructose corn syrup mess. So ladies and gentlemen, gather around for a tale of corn conspiracy and sweet, sweet deceit. Who would have thought that behind every bite of that mouth-watering pizza or the tempting lure of your favorite sugary treats lies a story of political maneuvers and cover-ups. So brace yourselves because we're going to dive deep into the thrilling journey of the world of corn. There is so much backstabbing and lies that you could write a Greek tragedy about it. So let's start. Picture this. It's World War II and the U.S. in desperate need of supplies, especially food. The government is faced with the daunting task of feeding 16 million hungry mouths involved in the war effort. To give you an idea of how much food the U.S. government needed, right before the war, food exports was at $500 million in 1940. A year after the war, it ended at $3.2 billion in 1946. In order to tax the farms to grow what is needed, the government gave them subsidies and food production exploded. Post-war, the enticing subsidies became as addictive as a potent drug and the farmers found themselves unwilling to kick the habit. Fast forward to the swinging 1970s where disco fever was spreading, platform shoes were all the rage, and President Richard Nixon found himself in a bit of a pickle. The Vietnam War was draining the nation emotionally and the economy was sputtering. Inflation was rampant, averaging at 10% each year. Not a good combo to deal with, especially on an election year. So what's the president to do? Enter Earl Butts, the Secretary of Agriculture from Indiana. This guy's credentials would make any farmer rejoice. Born and raised in Indiana on a dairy farm, went to Purdue University and got his bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in agriculture economics. As a farmer, you definitely want this guy on your side. Earl's brilliant idea. Let's give farmers subsidies to shot a nation with more grain than a confetti cannon at a clown convention. Genius, right? More grain means cheaper prices. Cheaper grain means cheaper food. Cheaper food means fatter wallets. And who doesn't love a bargain? Except if you're the family farms who didn't have enough land to grow corn at a high volume. But hey, who cares? It was a growth spurt for factory farms. So it looks like the good old boy from Indiana who grew up on a dairy farm is not exactly the hero for all farmers. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he had a slogan like any other politician to get his message out there. It must be something catchy to win over all the farmers. Now we didn't have any video about this because it was so long time ago. We actually researched it and I got it just right here. And it looks like he did have one. It was get big or get out. It looks like Girl forgot about his family roots in the name of economic efficiency. In fact, you could call him the father of factory farms. But bless you, Earl, for turning farming into a high-stakes game of monopoly. But Nixon needed those votes, and Earl's plan worked like magic. Lower food prices made voting people happy, and Tricky Dick secured the victory. You can always count on Richard Nixon and his administration to do the right thing. Now what to do with all the excess corn? Destroy it? Nah, that's way too easy. Dump it in the ocean? People will find out. Hide it? Can't do that. Q in Japan, our number one friend of me at the time. Earl Butts takes a trip across the Pacific Ocean to discover a scientific marvel that changes the game. High fructose corn syrup. Why, thank you, Earl. Thank you, Earl, for bringing this to the United States. Cheaper than sugar and sweeter than a love ballad. High fructose corn syrup became the answer to Nixon's corn surplus fiasco. But the syrupy revelation just didn't pop out of nowhere. Discovered in the 1950s, it wasn't until the 1970s that technology caught up to mass produce this golden elixir. And who was there to turn that surplus of corn into a sugary sensation? The get big or get out visionary Earl Butts. This syrup which destroyed family farms infiltrated everything. Pizza, donuts, soda, processed food, meats, you name it. The government played sugar puppet master, making sure this sweet concoction showed up everywhere. 
This black magic syrup made our food taste better, look better, and extended the shelf life from days to years. So rather than have thousands of bakeries across the United States making fresh cookies from whole food ingredients, all you need was a football-sized factory pumping out cookies for the whole nation that wouldn't spoil for years. And guess what? We're still doing it. Meanwhile, the sugar industry lobby had the government wrapped around a sweet little finger. High fructose syrup reached its peak in 1999, clocking at a staggering 66 pounds per person in the United States. Luckily, since then, it's been at a steady decline. But as of 2021, it's still a $5 billion industry, leaving us all swimming in a sea of corn syrup. So as the world moved away from saturated fats, the low-fat craze propelled the high fructose corn syrup industry into the limelight. And because when you take fat out of a recipe, food tastes like cardboard. And you need a little something, a little something to give it a little taste. And that little something is sugar. It's almost like an incognito drug deal that took the U.S. by storm. Hey, hey, we got three grams of sugar last week. You want a little nip? You want a little more of that sweet, sweet taste? Take it four grams this week. The addiction was everywhere. Saturated fat is bad but sugar is good, became the ethos, and junk food industry rejoiced, all thanks to surplus of corn that needed a home. And now one of the main reasons why, you got diabetes. So next time you sink your teeth into that sugary delight or savor the flavor of your favorite processed treat, remember, it's just not junk food, it's actually a piece of history, a testament to the power of corn and the art of sweet political maneuvering one sugary bite at a time.